Good morning, YouTube. Hello, welcome back to my channel, my home sweet classroom. Thank you for being here with me and joining me in my adventures in my fourth grade classroom. If you are new, my name is Maritza and I teach fourth grade. Welcome back and welcome to this week's vlog. This morning, I have already gotten a head start. I actually got here early enough um, with the whole time change. Like I've just been really thrown off and have been really struggling um, getting here at my normal time being here. Um, so <clears throat> this morning really I have just gotten my stuff together. I've printed out the things, my resources for the week and really have just been organizing myself because Mondays I really like to get prepared for the whole week. And today especially is my baby's first birthday so this afternoon I just want to get out of here really quickly right after school so that I can be with the baby and um, do uh, his just have a little celebration here at home with our with our family but um, that's <laughs> that's just a little bit of my personal life um, and so yeah, this morning I really just need to get some things done um, before I get my day started. Gotta get my objectives set up. I actually put up my objectives up here on my board. And as you can tell, I need to clean my board up. Um, and I put them out for the, per. I put them out daily. And then um, actually, well, I don't put out the language arts or reading daily. Um, my ELA block, it, I try to do it for the whole week because there's so many objectives that they need to know in one week or in one day there's like three objectives a day in my ela block so i it's it it'll be so much for me to just keep changing out so i just go ahead and put them all in one and then i put them up and for the whole week and just in case we don't get to finish those for that day then you can see it for the whole week and then you can see that the focus of that lesson is in one of those objectives but I need to put out some of my things here. I have um, my vocabulary words on a slide and my, uh, book. these are vocabulary words. These are my spelling words. And I just put them out on a slide and I cut this out and I put it on my focus wall. And then I have my pattern of the week. So I have to put those out. And then I also made copies for math. Um, we are doing measurement this week. So I have, um, my notes here so i have my notes here this is what they look like um my coffee these are the notes i have prepared for this week they'll be putting this into their journals and this measurement tool into their journals um i use interactive journals so they need these notes in order to um to be able to use them for future use in math lessons and simply they just, I, I went ahead and cut that for them and then put it in their journal. I, I went ahead and cut them for them and then they'll put it in their journal. They will, we are doing a cu customary measurements and I'll be having them cut and paste this into their journals. Uh, this one is identifying units for customary capacity and all they simply have to do is read the item and then decide whether it's the, which measurement it is. And I put them into two pieces because they go hand in hand. Um, then they have this one, the answering uh, or comparing customary capacity, the input, the output, and that's really just they all they do is cut cut it and paste it into their journals. And then I also have a different one here, and this one's just a different unit. This one's weight, and also the same concept. And then for the input and output as well here for weight. And then the last one is word problems. So they have to come use the customer conversion word problems, read the word problem and decide which out of the A, B, C, and D it would be. So all of these I use in stations. I actually give them the whole packet and then they work through it through, throughout the whole week. For my stations, I use uh, four different rotations. This particular uh, station is the create station. And I can tell you guys more about that, how I use uh, my math rotations and I'm able to have small group, I'm able to have a create station, which is their interactive journals. And then I'm able to have a apply station of our concept. And then it is the technology station.
And then this morning in the teacher's lounge, a teacher was getting rid of, I guess, um, this little tool here. And I actually really liked it because recently I saw that a teacher, well, it goes like this, I guess. I guess it goes like this. Recently, I saw a teacher use it for uh, her to put her, she would write her quotes on it and then it kind of hung and hung down on it. Um, I really, really like that using, uh, I really, really liked it to put quotes on. So I think I want to use it for that. Um, I'm hoping to find some like plain paper so that it the lines don't show. It kind of looks kind of funny with the lines on there. But I'm going to think of a place and I'm thinking it more like in the entrance area um, where I want to put it. And uh, recently a teacher told me that there is actually a book um, that from the book Wonder where he had, there's a particular, another separate book where he has all his quotes on there. And it was, it's really, really nice. Apparently I haven't seen it. So I'm, I'm curious to know what it looks like and um, use it in my classroom. So I'm going to go check that out later, um, another day, probably not today and see if I can implement those quotes to get my students inspired and motivated and get them thinking about something. Um, and yeah, so this morning I'm gonna go ahead and get cleaned up and I'm gonna get ready for my day and I will catch up with you guys later. Hello YouTube, good morning, happy Tuesday. This morning I have been really busy. Um, I've gotten a lot of things done this morning, so, so happy. And I'm actually going to be sharing with you guys what I'm doing in math today. I'm working at the same time at talking to you guys because y'all know that sometimes it's just like kind of morning. And this morning I actually have a couple things planned for math. I'm really excited to share with you guys, just as I was telling you yesterday, just a little bit about it. We're doing measurement in math and I wanted to give my students an opportunity to wrap up um, some of the, some of the, to wrap up the customary, uh, customary units. And what I'm doing with my students is a rotation of activities where my students will be, first of all, one of the games is a board game and it is capacity fill up. Um, they're going to be playing this board game using a, a cube and matching up the correct measurement for that active for that piece. And then um, this is what they will use. They'll use a true or false and then they can move it um, according to the the game board piece. So uh, pick a capacity card and determine if it is true or false and um, that's the board game and then I have cut out some measurement tools for them for them to use while they're playing this game just to help them but I also have real life-size uh, pieces as well these turn from gallons into pints into quarts and I also have cups and uh, other measurement tools to help them with this part of the, uh, the with that with the tools it'll be able to help them and um, be able to use real life sizes and I have little signs up true and false little signs for them for the the true and false activity and then I have this is I, th I think my favorite station. It is a scavenger hunt measurement activity and I actually created this one just right now just this morning really quickly um, because the one I had planned to print um, didn't was not printing out very well so I had to create quickly a new one um, and they'll be finding around finding objects around the classroom and then I put the last one as a challenge find an object around the school that is one ton so I really want them to use that relative size thinking and think okay maybe the um, the swing space out here might be equal to a ton or maybe two or two of these would be equal to a ton but that will be a fun activity get them moving around the classroom and um, as they as they find these objects they'll write them down in the box below um, so that's another activity and then I have a sorting activity where they will what's being measured sort I have the um, names here uh, lifting a barbell that is five pounds so they'll put it in the correct sort and that is it I did have a rock paper scissors 
uh, game that I thought would be fun, but some of these we haven't done in class, like um, the days from the weeks and the, um, what is the other one? Uh, I think that one was it, or seconds to minutes. We haven't covered that yet, so I'm not sure if I should put it out. I might do it as an enrichment activity for those who are finished and they might want something else to do, or uh, not an enrichment activity, just an extension activity. And then I have the last one, which is making lemonade. They'll be doing this with me, and I actually have the, reaching over you guys, um, the tools that they need to measure the correct amount to make lemonade. So we'll be stirring up some lemonade in fourth grade. Yay! And I have my cups. So that is the last thing we're going to be doing in the station. And then that's it. And I made a quiz and I created a quiz for my students because I think my, I think it's important to assess students and be able to understand whether they or to understand whether they are getting Hello friends, I just wanted to share with you guys how today's lesson went, um, how I showed you how I showed you before how I was setting it up for stations and I want to just tell you how great it went. My students were very much engaged and it was a lot of fun. Um, my group that made the lemonade, I actually let them go ahead and brainstorm how they were going to use the measurement tools and the the pitcher to make lemonade for their entire group. So that was fabulous. I liked how they brainstorm and um, collaborated and that was my biggest or, or my goal for that lesson um, and how I wanted them to apply their understanding of previous uh, lessons and knowledge. So that went absolutely great. I am so happy how the stations went. Even when I'm, most of my students at the end of the lesson were like, oh, thank you, Miss Lara, for uh, giving, letting us uh, do this instead of just doing our regular math lesson. So perfect. I am so happy. It went great. And my students were engaged and excited about doing uh, math and measurement. So tomorrow we will start on uh, metrics units of, of measurement and we're actually going to be doing mass and liquid volume next week and hopefully by the end of the week we'll um, be starting to wrap up measurement and move on to our next uh, lesson or our next unit lesson. Um, this afternoon I've got uh, to, to do some reading we're going to do some traveling with our scrapbook journals in social studies. And if you ha if you are new to my channel, you'll you can find that link um, or that video in another vlog where I talk about how I am uh, showing my students um, or teaching my students about the regions of the United States uh, by traveling through the United States in different regions, and we're using a travel scrapbook to um, collect all of our work from from the entire year for the regions of the United States. Um, we actually made new pages, uh, new covers for them. Let me show you guys some of those. And uh, we did this actually yesterday because I realized, you know what, I think my students need a cover page because I really, really enjoy scrapbooks. So I thought maybe I needed to give my students the opportunity to decorate their own. And let's see if I can find any of them. This is one right here. She's there. I told them they didn't have to be done right away. They can um, take some time and go ahead and print. They, if they're at the technology station and they have time, they can print out things for their cover. And it didn't have to be. It didn't have to be right away. Uh, this one as well is really nice. He told me before he went to lunch. I made um, planets as a border, and then he said he was going to print out a picture for to put inside that, like a frame. Um, let's see if I can find another one. This one as well is really nice. She went ahead and made um, planets as well. And then today I actually, let me put you guys down. Today I actually gave, or yes, today I actually gave them the covers for the Midwest region. And they look like this. They're also in the form of a scrapbook. And um, throughout the whole unit or the whole chapter we're gonna we're, they're gonna be filling in information such as the landforms the water of the midwest natural resources landmarks climate products culture of the midwest all of that good stuff um interesting facts and then i like because they have a map in the back 
I did get this resource on Teachers Pay Teachers and um, it was not free, but I'll link it down below. Like I usually do, I share with you guys the resources that I, that I, where I get my resources from. And then I also have a plain tour of the Midwest. Um, and it looks like this. And we last, uh, when we studied the Southeast, we did a boat tour because it was in on water. And now we're doing a plane tour of the Midwest, and we'll be doing several stops, several, several stops in, in the Midwest: uh, Missouri, Iowa, Kansas, South Dakota, Michigan, uh, the Ford Mortar Company, Chicago, and Mall of America. So some of these are quite new to me as well. So I'll be doing my research as a teacher. But I give my students also the opportunity and technology to do some research for their um, tour of the Midwest. Hello YouTube, good morning, happy Wednesday. It's now the middle of the week and it's rush, rush, rush for me. But I hope everyone's having a fabulous morning. This morning I have been um, preparing for my day. As I told you earlier this week, we have some special visitors. So I really wanna make sure that I am doing my part and making sure that I'm prepared for the day. I actually prepared um, I was looking at reflecting yesterday on my writing and I was just not happy with the way I had set it up. So I went ahead and changed it up a little bit um, and I want my students to experience the narrative writing. So I looked for some resources that align with the Common Core that my school is um, has adopted and I'm using something I found on Teachers Pay Teachers and it is actually a whole lesson piece. I did have to purchase it, um, so I'll link it down below if you're interested in something that's already prepared that can maybe give you a better um, a better planning so that you can use as a resource. I really liked it because it is aligned with Common Core and I can use it to, um, to teach my students on uh, pacing uh, of narrative. And I will show you guys in just a little bit. Um, I have to go for now, but um, I have lots to do and I will catch up with you guys in how my PowerPoint looks like and how I set it up uh, in my classroom so that I could display the objective and all that good stuff. But I will catch up with you guys later during maybe this afternoon, maybe my lunch. I don't know, we'll see. I did wanna show you guys something I added to my table groups. Here I have, um, journals at their tables so and then I have these uh, say something tags so they're kind of sentence starters to help them start um, conversations and collaborating and then I have my cones for my groups group number on the other side now the reason why I added their journals to their tables is because before I didn't have these the journals at their tables I had them separately in bins in another spot in another place in the room and it just was not working so I thought I'd add them to the tables and they have um, pretty much the journals that they need daily more than others they do have other interactive journals that I use but I have asked them to just have their math journal and their science soul studies journal at their tables and that way they have a reachable um, they can reach their interactive journals quickly and we can uh, start the lesson. They have number bins that are over there, but just all the stuff does not fit there. So I wanna make sure that they um, are organized and they don't get ruined. And that way when I'm grading, all I do is pull the basket and the journals are already in there. So that works out really great for me and I know what group they're in based on um, their table and that way I can grade it much more easily and have accessibility to assess them. I did want to show you something that I did I did incorporate into the classroom because I saw some really great posts about it and I thought it was just a fabulous idea to have. I love quotes and I don't know if you guys enjoy reading quotes or not, but I have here, and I'll tell you, turn you guys around, I have incorporated a quote of the day, or maybe every other day. I'm not sure if I can keep up with it daily, but or weekly maybe, and maybe focus on that quote and write about it. But uh, the most certain way to succeed is always to try one more time. 
Uh, this is by Thomas Edison and I have it on a rolling paper here and I thought it was a fabulous idea. Um, I got this idea off of another teacher on Instagram that um, she puts out a quote and then she has it up, um, I believe weekly. I'm not too certain, but I thought it was really cute to have in the classroom and some of my students really, really enjoy um, reading quotes and getting uh, inspirational messages from me. So just one more thing to add to my classroom that gives my students that encouragement that, um, that they need maybe. But I'm gonna end my day here. I'm gonna wrap it up because um, I gotta go home. <laughs> and uh, just gonna wrap up my things uh, here and, and get some stuff organized for myself tomorrow morning. So I will see you guys in the morning. Good morning, YouTube. Happy Thursday. Uh, this morning I came in and I am super tired. Like my eyes are just heavy and I am pretty tired this morning, but it's gonna be a great day. I know it is. Well, this morning what I have planned is uh, for math and and whatnot. Um, I am giving my students for morning. Oops, I'm giving my students for morning meeting some um, a crossword puzzle, and I'm kind of late on St. Patrick's Day, but I printed out the St. Patrick's Day. Uh, crossword puzzle and then I also have a national chip day and this is for March 23rd so I thought because it falls on a Saturday I thought well perhaps maybe then I'll bring chips and dip on Friday which is tomorrow and I'll give them the crossword puzzle to have that um, as a snack or as a yeah after maybe after lunch and then we could just like kind of relax more of a relaxed day um i do ma mainly assessments on friday like their spelling tests their weekly tests weekly quizzes and i thought maybe it'd be fun to bring in some chips and dip and as they finish they can uh, grab um, some chips and uh, their crossword puzzle and enjoy that so that's what i have planned for tomorrow and i'm really excited because it's a little twist to motivate them to uh, enjoy and their friday I'm wondering if you guys are doing exit tickets. I um, have gone to PDs before, professional developments, and they talk about how exit tickets are important and um, we should be assessing them and closing our lesson in form of discussion or some kind of method to, um, to end the lesson. So I personally do exit tickets and it works out perfectly because um, we go to lunch so we actually exit the classroom but uh sometimes we don't sometimes i do social studies right after math but um i do have exit tickets and they look like this and i just put the i put all of my exit ticket questions into a powerpoint slides and um, i display it on the smart board and then they're supposed to answer the exit ticket i have really struggled at the beginning of the year with my students in doing these because they weren't they weren't producing um complete sentences their just their response was maybe two words so now by this time in the year i'm actually getting full length um responses where i have a response and then most of them give me an example of maybe something they did in class something they learned or something they heard a peer do so i have really enjoyed doing exit tickets if you guys are interested in other ways um that you we, you can use uh exit tickets or closing the lesson i would love to do a video on that i'm very big on um, closing the lesson and making sure students are comprehending the objective that they learned that day. So that might be something I'd consider doing. If you are interested, comment down below. I'd love to hear your opinion about it and um, just see if, there, if you guys are interested in hearing something like that. But anyways, this morning I have just those a couple things to do and um, then I'm going to um, go pick up my students from specials. But I will catch up with you guys later. I hope everyone enjoys their morning and has a fabulous um, day. <laughs> I will catch up with you guys later. Bye. 
I do have an anchor chart to make and it's gonna be on metric units. Uh, we are starting elapsed time as well, but I wanted to go ahead and uh, just discuss really quickly with my class and um, do a couple more problems on metric units using word problems because we will be doing that um, later in later next week. So I did want to do an anchor chart to display in my classroom so that they have a relative size of it because metric units is um, just a little bit, it's a different and I don't have the actual measurements for metric units um, that like I did in customary. So I wanted to make an anchor chart on that and I also uh, have uh, actual clocks for as my manipulatives for the elapsed time and also making an anchor chart for that. I love making anchor charts um, as well as my interactive journals. I do have my students draw and write the information. If I don't, if I'm not doing it directly in my, to my interactive journal with them, then I do have them do whatever I have on my anchor chart into their journal. So they have notes for whatever purpose they need it later on in the unit or for a quiz or a test. So I'm going to go ahead and get that done and I will catch up with you guys this afternoon. Hello friends. It is now the end of my day and my hair is in a pencil. A pencil because my hair tight broke. <laughs> well, today has been a really great day and um, we've got so much done. I am so, so happy with how my writing lesson came out. I am really, I feel like my students really enjoyed it and have uh, been really engaged this afternoon. It was a really great lesson. I am so happy. I told you guys yesterday about how I wanted to improve my writing lesson and I found a fabulous teacher who created who created this con this uh, content, this uh, package and um, it was it's just it was really great. I really enjoyed it. I was hesitant about doing some of the things on there with my fourth grade students, but I am really happy I did. I found a new strategy I, get, I wanted to share with you guys. I'm not going to go into really big detail um, into every part of the lesson, but one strategy I did learn that you can apply it to really any part of the, uh, any content that you want is called um, stand up, hand up, pair up. So I've never heard it. I've heard of uh, turn and talk. I've used turn and talk. I've heard uh, or I've used other, um, i trying to remember, turn and talk. Um, where we do musical share, they stand up and they walk around, I play the music, kind of like musical chairs and stop the music and then they share with the person that's close to them. But I discovered or I've learned of hand up, so they are stand up, they stand up from their seat, they put their hand up and then they pair up. So they, they just go and high five the person um, closest to them or uh, just find a pair to, to give a high five and share with. That was really fun. My students really enjoyed it. I could tell that they were excited and I saw some really great collaboration between them. They weren't um, hesitant about sharing with somebody that they don't that they didn't that they didn't want to be with. They still did it. It was great. Um, so that was really great. If if I think it'll work really well um, with most of with most grades. So um, I did have to do a little bit of redirection. Oh, you've already paired with that person, so go find somebody else. But Nothing really, it went really great. I asked a question and as soon as they paired up, I use my, zip, this week it's zip it, lock it, and they say, put it in your pocket. Um, before I've used waterfall, waterfall, and they go shh. Uh, but this week it's a different one, and right away I got their attention, asked them the question, and then they shared, and then I say hand, uh, hand up, because they're already standing up, so hand up, pair up, and then share. So that went really great. I'm really happy with how that lesson went. And I read the book um, that uh, I don't believe I shared, but I have never read the book that's called, let me pull it up, um, The Fantastic Flying Books of, of Mr. Morris Lesmore. That is a fabulous book. I 
I really, really enjoyed it. I wish I had a hard copy of it and I'm, I'm hoping, I'm gonna order it. Like, I have to have that book in my classroom. I saw, I, pl I put it on YouTube and I didn't, I didn't find a video um, of a read aloud that was like, the voice was entertaining and exciting. So I went ahead and just muted and found the best video that showed the pictures where I could see the words to read to my students. So I, I was able to do the read aloud, um, but I, using a the video and I read it aloud um, that is a fantastic book if you ever get a chance to look at it it has beautiful illustrations and I it was really nice because there was a lot in there that focused on other um, other objectives that we've been learning in class like theme uh, setting figurative language all of those were integrated within that book, so there was some really great discussion along with going with uh, along with the 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 objective of understanding narrative writing. So it was a really great opener uh, mentor text to the read aloud for my lesson. So that was really exciting. This afternoon, right now, it is almost four o'clock, and I am getting myself ready for tomorrow. I clean up my room. I finish that anchor chart and. I have more anchor charts to come <laughs> to do so um, I want to go ahead and wrap up my day here and just get some things done in the classroom and then I'll see you in the morning hello good morning YouTube happy Friday TGIF yay my morning today is a little bit different um, this morning I have a doctor appointment for my son so you can hear him in the back my little kitty pitsuti back there he is gonna be having his one-year-old checkup. And um, yeah, so this morning is a little bit different. Um, our, I'm here now, I just got here. And after this, I'm gonna go back to my classroom, finish off the day. And this afternoon, actually we have a performance, uh, a concert, My stu uh, actually all of elementary and high school, I believe is performing. So I'm really excited to see that and um, even my daughter is super excited about it. They're gonna have a whole dance. They even made costumes. So I'm very, very excited to see how uh, it all turns out and comes together. They've been practicing and working really hard toward it. And they're all very enthusiastic about it. So I cannot wait to see it and um, take pictures, record, and share with all the parents as well. Parents are invited. So I am excited to uh, see them as well. And I will catch up with you guys back in my classroom in just a little bit. Well, now it's the end of the day and I'm getting ready to go. It's about 4.30 on a Friday and I'm still at school. Um, I got some things done. I got my newsletter done. I got some planning done, but I still have some, I'm gonna have a grading party at home because I have lots of grading to do. Um, I have some friends in here with me who are just bouncing around on the yoga balls and uh, yeah I'm gonna call it a day I did want to share with you guys my anchor chart that I made for this morning that I was absent I didn't let my students know so when they came in this morning they came into um, some an anchor chart that they were supposed to earn sprinkles for uh, or a donut they were supposed to earn sprinkles for to earn a class reward. So let me show you and take you to my anchor chart. Looks like this. Unfortunately, they did not get 10 sprinkles, but it was an interesting day. So I went ahead and gave them extra Reese's for their effort. I was really proud of the five sprinkles they had. Um, and it says, guest teacher, please add a sprinkle each time the class has good behavior. And I think they did a good job. Um, the sub this morning had um, some great comments for me as I came in the classroom and they all had something to say as I was coming in. So it ended well. The concert that I told you guys this morning, about this morning, um, went absolutely great. It was wonderful to see all of, all of the grades from pre-K all the way up to um, sixth grade perform. And they did a fabulous job. Um, I got to see some dances from the Philippines. I got to see some dances from other countries and they just did a wonderful job. It was so cute and um, just their effort and motivation, their faces, their costumes, all of that was so great to see. I am ready to head home and I'm gonna call it a day here. 
in my week in fourth grade. I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, being with me this week and I will see you soon. Uh, next week I'm hoping to uh, do some vlogging on different content areas. Uh, I have some ideas brainstormed and I'm so excited to share them with you guys. Uh, I will see you guys later. I hope you have enjoyed being with me and sharing my experiences. I appreciate all of your support and effort in my vlogs. I, have re I really enjoy it. I love sharing what I do in the classroom and I just, I love expressing it as you can see. So I'm really happy you're here joining me in my community in uh, the teacher YouTube world. Please don't forget to subscribe and like this video. If you are interested in watching some of my other videos, check out the links in uh, the next part of this vlog. And I will see you guys later. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Bye guys, Bye. till next time. <laughs>